Yes, what I like to do the most is I love finding companies doing amazing things. I love to hear what they're doing and I wanna help them once we've invested. Like, that's what I love to do. Hello, and welcome to our webinar, hosted by Omni, a JP Morgan company, which focuses on supporting venture capital firms worldwide. I'm Jaden Lin, I will be your host. I have some very special guests with us here today, both from our seven partners. The first is Trey Ward, a general partner, and second is Grace Coletta, the operations specialist. Thank you both for being here. Thanks, Thanks for having you. us. So starting off, we'd love to start with you, Trey. Uh, as as we know, um, you have a very interesting story <laughs> and uh, very interesting Maybe. origins. <laughs> You're a successful investor, entrepreneur, inventor. Um, love to hear, and everybody else would love to hear a little bit more how you got started, um, starting off from your university days until now. Yeah, so uh, I started out studying engineering in undergrad, and I pretty much always knew I wanted to start a company. Like That's what I was interested in. What I didn't know is how to do that. So I was taking all the classes I could, and I would come back from class, and I would just write down ideas of companies or things I would want to start. And I had a professor, a mentor at the time, who encouraged me just how do you start? You just do it. Um, so I started a company uh, using solar power to smart, uh, basically power electronics and, and water, different plant life uh, in, in an efficient way. Um, probably not your billion dollar idea, but you know, a fun idea to work on when I was in school. Uh, I was lucky enough to win uh, some funding from the EPA um, and started you know, building that out, working with different electronics providers, um, really learning a lot. Uh, and actually we had a, a stage uh, two of the competition where we all traveled to Washington, DC. I think there was 55 teams competing um, and you had to learn how to pitch because the top seven won. So, um, and we, we were fortunate to win. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, but I'll never forget my dad who's not, you know, when we talk business, we talk business. And so I said, hey, I think I'm, you know, I, I just graduated. I think I'm gonna go start this company up. And he said, Trey, you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. You should go start a company. And so I was thinking to myself, like, I, I, I want to be at a start, you know, a startup. I want to go at something that's small and moves fast. Um, how do I do that? And so this is 2010 um, and I want to stick around Chicago. Um, so I just went to the engineering career for looking for a startup, which, you know, in hindsight, pretty dumb. <laughs> but uh, there was one company there. And the founders were early at a company I'd never heard of called Salesforce.com. And I remember going home and Googling, like, what, what is Salesforce? What does it do? Um, and although I didn't have a complete understanding of it, if you just looked at the stock price, it was pretty clear that was a good company. Um, and so I ended up joining that startup. We, you know, this is pre-co-working. So we had an apartment in Chicago for any Chicago people out there, the, the corner of North Avenue, Damon and Milwaukee. Uh, we had a you know, handful, a couple handful of people in the office. Um, and we were doing software implementations for Salesforce and also building out custom uh, software um, applications. And we grew fast. Uh, and, and it's, again, one of those things you don't know any better. So, you know, we were always profitable, growing really fast. Um, and within three years, we got acquired by a public company out of Minneapolis. Um, and that company connected devices to the internet. Um, there's more to it, but think 4G, 5G, Bluetooth, Zigbee, like different protocols to connect things to the internet. And this is around 2014, I started to think pretty deeply around what would happen when everything was connected to the internet. What, what if these devices were operating in the world, whether it was a car or a robot or some sort of vehicle connected to the internet. And I was really enthused by that prospect. Like I, I thought it was a really exciting future to think about it and also a logic, I'm pretty logical. So a pretty logical opportunity set. And so um, once we got acquired, uh, I stayed there for a little bit. I left and started my own business, helping companies grow operationally. But during that time, I was really trying to meet people in the entrepreneurial space in Chicago um, and, and you know beyond Chicago. And so one of the people that I met was Tyler, uh, who is co-founder of R7. And I just remember riffing with him about you know what was gonna be that killer application in the physical space. And, you know, for me, and I know he's a controversial uh, person now, but it was Elon Musk and Tesla. And I was just reading about everything they were doing. And I was convinced that cars were going to drive themselves. Uh, and so Tyler was running R7. He said, I'm actually going to go uh, to the Valley and I'm going to go in a self-driving car in a few months. You want to come with? 
Uh, and so I went, uh, early days of Zooks, a, a lot of our venture partners uh, at the time were working there. Uh, a little, looked like a little go-kart with an iPad picked us up and I was hooked. And that, that was that. And so, you know, as we look out at our seven, what is our seven do, who are we? Uh, we're an early stage venture firm that invests in founders rebuilding the physical world. And we do that by applying advanced technologies to things like transportation, uh, energy manufacturing. And if you look at our portfolio, you know, you're gonna see a lot of autonomous systems, um, a lot of things in the physical world, like airplanes that fly themselves, cars that drive themselves, uh, sensors and perception stack, uh, elements that, that enable those types of things, autonomous farming. Uh, I think the one that when people look at our website, they get most excited about is, we have a company that uh, does autonomous robots in the ocean that's actually mapping 99% of the ocean floor. Um, and actually a large percent of the ocean is not mapped, which is you know, pretty unbelievable that we can go to outer space and land on the moon, but we don't even really know what's under the ocean. So a lot of you know, exciting things. And for me, you know, if you would have told 21 year old me what I was doing now, it'd be a dream come true. Uh, you know, that said every day, you still got to get up and work hard. So I don't know, a little, a little different when you're in the spot now, but uh, it, it's awesome. So oh, that's great. That's great. So starting off from, uh, you know, engineering and your dad saying, you just got to go out and doing it to yeah. uh, helping other people do it. Yeah. That's the dream. Uh, I love that. I love it. Thank, thank you for sharing. You got it. Uh, and Grace, love to hear a little bit too about, about your background and kind of how your four and a half years of operational excellence uh, here at R7. And as some people have said, kind of being the glue in the operations, how, how that plays a role in all this as well. Yeah. I had a less direct path. Uh, basically, I studied psychology and music in school. So of course I work in venture capital now. <laughs> um, but like right out of college, I worked at a startup and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. But um, I loved that position. I was an executive assistant at a startup and I got to see like everything that was going on all the time. Um, then moved to a larger health tech organization. Didn't love that as much. Like I, I realized I wanted a smaller environment and uh, R7 was looking for somebody at the time. I got coffee with Trey one day and I knew that like we were gonna get along, at least from a cultural perspective. So I just decided to try it out. And um, yeah, so it's been the last four and a half years I've been the ops manager here at R7. And it has kept my day-to-day -day super interesting. Nothing is ever the same. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm really just loving it. Like I'm loving getting to support not just the general partners, but all the founders that we work with and being sort of a resource to our investors and our vendors and just sort of being that point person. And um, that's that's what I like doing. I like yeah. supporting. I need to brag about Grace for a second. <laughs> please, please, yeah. <laughs> so what, what people don't know from the outside, you know, venture has this perception from the outside and, and that's fine, it is what it is. There are a lot of things that you have to do. It's not someone just brings you a wheelbarrow of cash and you hand it out to startups. <laughs> as much as I wish that was the case, that isn't it. And so, you know, Yes, what I like to do the most is I love finding companies doing amazing things. I love to hear what they're doing and I wanna help them once we've invested. Like That's what I love to do. As part of that, fundraising, everyone knows, is, is a part of it as well. Um, so there's a lot of, of work that goes into that as well. Well, we're also running multiple funds. We have multiple legal entities. We have employees. We have reporting that has to go out. We have audits and so, there are so many things that you have to do. And by the nature of a venture firm, you know, you look at most venture firms, it's not a thousand people, it's not a hundred people, it's 10 people, it's, it's eight people, it's 12 people. And so Grace gets tasked with doing a tremendous amount of work across a number of different areas of the business. Um, and the better she does her job, the happier I am because I get to go out and do the, the things that I'm really excited about. Um, but it is a Herculean task to tackle all the things that we do in an efficient way, both from a time perspective and a cost perspective. Um, and that's why we agreed to this interview with Omni, <laughs> frankly, because it's Omni is one of those tools, like it's one of yeah. the handful of tools that like you really can't live without. And it lets us punch above our weight. And internally, like I said, our goal is, I wanna spend 100% of my time working with companies. That's never mm -hmm. gonna happen. But like always working to get closer to that point is the dream and the goal. Um, so Grace, without Grace, <laughs> nothing is possible. I promise you, um, she's the best. Thanks. <laughs> no, thank, thank you for that. Honestly. Um, and that segues into everything else we're going to talk about too. So that's great. And we're glad that you, uh, 
agreed to agreed to this interview. Yeah, so absolutely. <laughs> um, so I guess kind of my next question. This is like a perfect segue. Is when it comes to, I mean, you'd probably agree with the statement that venture is a pretty um, has a high level of ambiguity, mm -hmm. right? When it comes to venture and ventures and industry as a whole. So, two part question is how before did you add structure to the ambiguity? And then how do you do it now? I guess pre and post Omni as well as just systems in general. Yeah, I mean, I, I think internally we've always wanted to be super organized. Um, internally, you know, we put a lot of time and effort into getting things in the right. And I, sometimes we joke, I'm like, I wonder how other people do it. And, and mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends at other firms and I, I generally know how they do it, but like there's certain tools in my opinion that are almost required Omni is one of them. And so like, I'll talk through maybe pre-Omni, post-Omni, maybe that's helpful. Um, fund one, I mentioned this earlier, fund one's mm -hmm. easy because you make a few investments from an operations perspective, I should say, mm -hmm. but you make a few investments. They're all recent. You know what the terms were. You know all the rounds that are happening. Like you're really in tune with what happened then. Then you add a second fund. Then you add a third fund then all of those first fund companies are doing multiple round of funding. The second uh, fund company is doing multiple. So then it starts to get really complex and it's not in a linear path. It, it's exponential because you have more and more companies doing more and more rounds. And so that multiplies out to a lot of information that, you know, Grace made a comment when we first started, a lot of this stuff is in the GP's head. Like as a lot of it is in your head. Mm -hmm. That doesn't scale. Yeah. And so um, having Omni go through every single one of our transaction documents for all of our companies all of time. Number one, the setup just guaranteed we have it all. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of firms probably think they have everything. They don't. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find out when you do the <laughs> Omni audit that you're missing, you know, a charter from seven years ago for, mm -hmm. you know, and so those types of things is getting it all, making sure it's right. Um, again, another thing, and I, Tony, I'm, I knew Tony, the, the founder of Omni way back when, and he would say, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you'd be shocked by the number of times that not enough shares have actually been issued in the charter to mm -hmm. support what people think they own. That's happened to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like getting all the organization, all the documents, is it actually right? And then having all that information put in a very um, accessible user interface where we can log in. And again, to segue, Grace is talking with vendors, she's talking with LPs, she's talking with companies. There's a wide range of, of questions that need to be asked. And so what traditionally happened before Omni is, Grace gets a question, well, there's no easy way for her to get that information, so she asked me, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Yeah. Or try to make sense of a legal document that like is pretty complicated, yeah. usually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're not attorneys, and so yeah. like, what would happen next? We're pretty organized, but I still have to go and find that file. I open it up and I read through the specific legal section of whatever that document is to make sure that we're sending back information that's 100% correct. Mm -hmm. That loop is repeated tens, 20, like countless times throughout a year. Mm -hmm. And so for Grace to be able to access that information, all of it in one place, know that it's accurate, know that she can get in a very uh, user-friendly way and then reply with confidence mm -hmm. is is huge. And so like, again, if you just talk about all the operational things we're doing and all those little loops that we have to do, if you can eliminate all those loops and just turn it into a one minute login from Grace, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, no, I love that, I love that. Uh, sometimes I think of it as you have, especially in relationship-based firms, right? Like VC and other industries, you have the tacit knowledge holders, such as yourselves who have been there for the deals seven years ago. Yeah. Um, or the deal yesterday, you went to lunch with the founder or something like yeah. that. But all of that doesn't necessarily translate over to everybody else in your organization. 100%. Right. And it can't. I mean, yeah. there, there's, I would spend my entire day just talking about what's happened. Mm -hmm. At some point, that break needs to happen and there needs to be a way to access that information. Um, and one other thing too that I failed to mention is, one thing Omni gives me is a sense of confidence that everything is correct. What do I mean by that? Any transaction, you and the founder are in agreement. Then that needs to get translated to the attorneys. Then they need to be in agreement. Then that needs to be translated to all the other attorneys in the deal. So everyone needs to be in agreement. And then certain documents are filed, like at the articles of incorporation, and there could be a typo in that. Even though mm -hmm. everyone agrees, and this happened recently, is like everyone agrees, 
but that isn't necessarily what's filed with the state. And so how do, how do you find that out? One way to do it is to have your attorney that you pay a bunch of money for redo the docs, which is not practical. I mean, it's, it's cost prohibitive. Um, but what Omni enables is a third party independent to the transaction that isn't in all those conversations. The only way that you guys can get the information is by reading through the legal documents, pulling that information out. And then once it's put in there, you know, Grace and I have a meeting every single month where we look at all the transactions that are in there and say, does this match what we believe it should be? Right. And so it is a third party authentication that gives me the peace of mind to say, hey, um, everything is documented the way that I think it is. Um, and you might say, like, Trey, how often does that not happen? Right. I don't know, maybe 95, 97 percent of the time it's right. But if, if it's if there's an error one out of every 25 times for a company that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, that's a big deal. <laughs> and so you don't want to be 99 percent. You want to be a hundred percent. I love that. I think. Thank you for sharing that. I think. I think that's amazing. And you honestly uh, summarized the original impetus behind Omni. Of course, we've built into a, a lot more things now, which we can talk about here in a minute. But that was the original impetus, right? Yeah. You have all these legal documents. How do you know which ones are actually correct? You had a lawyer put them together, so everybody's like, "Oh, they must be correct." And then you get to an exit or a liquidation event, or maybe a partial liquidation or an M and A, and you're like, "Okay." What if the legal documents don't yeah. say that? And by the way, all the people involved in the transactions are all great people. Yeah, yeah. The, the problem is they're all humans too. Mm -hmm. It's like everyone makes mistakes. That's ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't care who your attorney is. You'd say, oh, I, mistakes happen. And that's just the way that it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Nobody's perfect. Oh, I like that. So, I mean, that's that's kind of like the starting point of everything, right? So we've gone through, you've structured things. Um in, in your own firm, as well as in your own investments. And you've kind of seen that, that surety, right? From there, what are, what are ways that you've been able to utilize the platform in order to not just retroactively check investments you've made, but possibly manage your current portfolio or manage future investments? Yeah, I mean, do you want to talk about the quarterly reporting and audits that we say, do? And then, yeah, I can and talk about the audit. Into the next piece? Uh, so I would say when I first started R7, one of the one of the things I was tasked with was, it sounds so basic, but truly just getting our reporting out on time. It was it was kind of a slog to do that, and I needed a lot of your time, a lot of Tyler's time, a lot of just like go betweens. Um, and with Omni, we have like our fund administrator on the platform as well. They can pull information. So as long as everything is up to date, which we're checking at least on a monthly basis, sometimes on a weekly basis, um, valuation process is so much faster. Just all of that is so much faster and like, yeah, everything's on time now. Yeah. <laughs> and then with the audit process as well, like that's an annual thing um, that when I started, we just had one audit and now we have two. We'll probably have more as we grow. Um, and just managing that process was a huge time suck. Um, collecting documents, another very basic thing that takes so much time that Omni is incredibly helpful with. Like everything is right there. You just click on download. Um, and yeah, and our auditors can be in the platform as well, collecting all that information without me needing to like try to translate things or go and hunt things down. So, um, that's been huge for sure. Yeah. I mean, another small thing is, it's funny that you brought up documents. I didn't mm -hmm. even think about this till now, but the amount of like, I'll get a number of drafts throughout the process mm -hmm. and then I'll get even the final version of the document and then I sign it. And then it has to be consolidated in a closing book. And so like, you might say like, why can't you find the documents? Oh, I can find the documents. I find seven different versions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's part of the problem is like, I have to go through and make sure. And so we'll get a notification like, hey, you're missing a signature page from XYZ firm on this financing. I'm not looking if every single firm has signed their documents and we've collected those signatures. Like, mm -hmm. it's frankly not worth my time having Omni go through and send a notification, hey, you don't have all the signature pages or, or all those things. It's like the devil's in the details and it's it's not as obvious as it seems. I'm just like, oh, just grab the legal documents. Hmm. I have a bajillion versions, right? And, and you got to get it all done. And then, you know, in terms of your question about like proactive, what happens to, to me, Grace, like I said, leads the operations. And so she's making sure that the trains are, are leaving the station on time. What is impromptu is financings and deals. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have a growing portfolio um, at any point in time. I mean, any week or certainly any month, there's a transaction happening. And so 
um, we're very much in tune with our founders. Like we keep a, a concentrated portfolio because we, we really want to have a big impact with our founders and with those companies. Um, but you need to get up to speed fast. So what does that mean? Like the liquidation preference, uh, the number of outstanding shares, voting thresholds, not just what we own, but what does everyone else own? Because you could see a term sheet come across or certain things where, where thresholds are set at a place where maybe someone has rights that they shouldn't have and maybe that's intentional or unintentional. But you wanna have a large amount of information very quickly to get up to speed. And again, that's what Omni allows. Um, I, I got asked the question, what would I do if I didn't have Omni? And my response was a lot of work, right? <laughs> I could do all these things. It's just, I'm going to have to go to every single transaction document. I'm going to have to read every single thing. Like it's not impossible. It's, it's not enjoyable. Uh, I would rather just click in Omni and have all the information set out. Who's the board? What's the price per share? How many shares do we own? How many outstanding shares are there? The pre monies, the post monies. All of those things, just like that, accurate, it's a big deal. I love that. Thank you. And, and when you're looking at all the different documents for your current portfolio and future portfolio, how big of a play does uh, basically market, like the, the macro market kind of play into that? And how do you keep a tab on that? I live and breathe the market. Like mm -hmm. I know what's fair pricing. I know what's not fair pricing. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, what is the pricing? It's what people are willing to pay. And mm -hmm. like you get a good feel for that. But what might happen is, especially over the last few years where the venture market was very dynamic and prices were changing, you might be talking with a company that, that maybe you're interested in investing in or, or maybe one in, in our portfolio. And they say, hey, my last valuation was X. Well, that might have been in 2021. 2023 mm -hmm. is a very different world. And so like, just because your valuation was this mm -hmm. doesn't mean it is this. Me saying that is one thing going into Omni and pulling up all of the market data and showing it to somebody without any bias from me. Just here's the facts, here's what the market says. I think that makes it a lot more palatable and, and can take difficult conversations and maybe make them a little easier. Um, and so like that is a, a place where I've used marketing for, or, or, or uh, on the flip side, like a lot of times the founder will just say, hey, like what is a good series A evaluation? Or, mm -hmm. or like what is the range? Or how much comp are you giving to certain people in certain stages, what seems like we, we want to have an option pool that's a bajillion percent. Okay, well, market's more like this and you can look across all these different term sheets and all these different rounds and see it. And so I think, you know, it does a good job of, you brought up in the, in the, in the beginning, it's uh, private markets are by their nature not very clear, mm -hmm. like in the public markets where, mm -hmm. where all that information is out there. And so in, in kind of an opaque market, you do still want to have information. Like you do still want to have insightful things you can use. And it's, you know, in it's private market, it's tricky. That's, I mean, we want to make sure that everything was accurate and it was fast. And as a venture firm, like that's your responsibility. Um, good isn't enough, especially when it comes to financial reporting and audits, that it needs to be perfect. Um, so Grace and I said, all right, we're meeting every single month with the Omni team. You guys have made it a lot of fun to, to, to show up yeah. and, and work on these things and get solutions fast. And so, you know, when I see that, uh, the monthly call, yeah, I'm looking forward to it because it's like <laughs> we're going to have a good time and we're going to get things done and it's going to be right and it's going to be fast. And it's that, you know, also that feeling of making sure that you have everything organized in your ducks in a row is a good feeling. Uh, and working with good people on it, it just makes it more fun. So it's, it's a call I look forward to. I know that even if we have like maybe a very nuanced thing that we want to see on the platform or kind of issue that's been around. Um, I don't, yeah, I just, I know it's going to get fixed. And if it's not, then I know that you're going to like have a, a solution for us in the meantime. And yeah, it's just, it's really great. I love working with good people. One thing that I am excited. So, so when JP Morgan made the acquisition, mm -hmm. I was happy for your team, but I was also happy because I felt that was going to be a lot of resources to continue to improve the platform. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so many ways, like as much as Omni does, I mean, I could write out a roadmap for you guys of just like things that I would like to see. And, and the cool thing is I know that they're going to happen, mm -hmm. right? And it just keeps building on each other and building on each other and building on each other. Um, so I'm excited for, for not only Omni now, but where it's going. Mm -hmm.